what's up? This your boy, Big Man. You already know what it is, man. So let's get right to it. Okay, so Jay Prince Jr., man. Now, for those of you who don't know, Jay Prince is the founder of Rap A Lot Records, an icon in this hip hop game. His contributions to hip hop will be talked about for years and man, years and years to come. I mean, decades and decades from now, they're going to know who Jay Prince was. Now, Jay Prince Jr. is his son and his namesake. Jay Prince Jr., or Jr. as he's called, man, Jr. was on the infamous Clubhouse app. Now, on the Clubhouse app, he had none other than a whole bunch of people he called in this room the Mob Ties Riders. Now, his saying and one of the company sayings is Mob Ties for rap a lot records now there's no implication on any illegal t activity that's just one of their sayings now jay prince has been a man a huge part in the rap game now when i say jay prince i mean jay prince jr as far as the recent artist to get in the game like he's the guy i believe who discovered drake and really negotiated his deal to get him in the rap game when he thought he was going to quit and what whatnot spent the money on the studio time all that, man. You know what I mean? So we, man, hip-hop owes him a lot. And not to mention right now, he's working on Honeycomb Brazy, man. They bringing Honeycomb Brazy into the game. So this dude is a bona fide hustler, man. And he's doing his dad's name proud, right? But, man, he got on this Clubhouse app and went at Joe Budden's neck. Anybody and everybody who comes to my channel have heard me say this in the past when Joe Budden has come up. There, he's one of only three people that are hip-hop media that I'll never dish. You'll never hear me say something bad because I am a real fan of his work, like legit fan of his podcast. I think it's brilliant. I think when they came up with the Everyday Struggle, that was a brilliant idea. But for some reason, him and Jazz Prince were not, excuse me, him and, and uh, Jay Prince Jr. or Jr. were not getting along. Even Joe Budden made that mistake and called him Jazz instead of uh, Jay Prince because Jazz is the one you always see in the, in the club, popping the bottles, doing all the wild stuff. And then Jay Prince Jr. is the more business guy, even though he be, he be popping the bottles too. But you're, you usually see him with the celebrities and working with the rappers and getting things done for rap a lot. You know what I mean? But Jr. definitely has some type of bone to pick with Joe Button, man. So he went at Joe Button's neck, man. I'm talking about like Joe Button was like, you know, he had to take a step back. Like you could hear it in his... Like, what is this dude talking about? Like, <laughs> there were so many times it was an awkward silence. It's unreal. And man, I just can't do it justice. So this is going to be one of the longest videos I ever put up here. But here goes most of the audio. And you'll hear, man, the initial situation or verbal altercation that begins. And it's really a one-sided argument because Joe Biden really didn't want none of that smoke. And I feel him because, man, I would also love to go to Turkey Leg Hut someday. But, man, let's get to the clip. But before we do that, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. And let's get it. It's hard to come by by a bunch of people because they know I really come from that. Joe, you just want to move on to somebody else? No, man, I'm, I'm, I'm just here listening. Well, I like to talk about that, the prison system. Ain't, ain't that much to listen to, my brother. <laughs> it's just us having a conversation. And it's a light conversation because we ain't talking about shit. Well, then, you want to start a conversation? Why don't you ask Joe something? Y'all can ping pong off each other. No, I was asking him. He the interviewee. I ain't never did no podcast and got to talk about niggas. He did that, though. I was challenging I mean, him. I was challenging him to do that to me. Jay, you low key can have your own podcast. Though, yeah, it's cool. I know what real. I I know what I'm capable of. I'm talking <laughs> You've about been what podcasting he, all I know, night. I know what he. I know what he. I know what he already did. I know what's transpired already. Therefore, I want to see if he can reciprocate that same energy to me. Because I know what he's done to others already. I want to see him reciprocate that same energy to me. Junior answered all his boy questions. And what if he can't re give you that same shit? Shit, tell him to say that and we can keep on moving. He can move on and ask somebody else a question. I know how he like that. Yeah, 
go with this wiggle on other niggas, go with this wiggle on me. So we so this is the question game in here. This is the what? So y'all were playing the question game in here? No, nah, it's your question game in here. I don't have any questions. How how this shit started based upon you? I don't have any questions. The, the, the question is, do you have a question to ask Junior? No. Because I see that you reciprocate negative energy to certain individuals. I wanted to see if you can reciprocate that energy to me and we just can have an intellectual conversation. You talk to a bunch of dummies. And I don't want to discredit any niggas. But you talk to a bunch of niggas who don't know how to speak. And can't articulate themselves in the right manner to deliver the right message. But can you do that with a man who can decipher himself in the proper manner? Can you have a conversation with a guy who can exemplify himself in the way he need to be exemplified instead of the manner that you try to portray him? Jay, I can have any conversation with any man. Then have a conversation with me. I, I do not think that I run around spewing negativity the way that it sounds like you think. Now, as you can see, man, things are spiraling out of control early. It just so a lot of awkward silence and a lot of Joe Budden just chilling and a lot of J Prince Jr., you know, pretty much putting it out there and seeing it what Joe is about, man, trying to get under his skin a little bit. And trying to, you know, bait him into an argument, it seems like. Now, I'm not saying that Jay Prince Jr. or Jr. needs to bait Joe Button into an argument. That's not it. But it does seem like that way from the audio. Now, what I'm going to do now is just let the rest of the audio play. And, man, you guys enjoy. And make sure you hit that like button on your way through this. And make sure you hit that subscribe button if you're new to this channel. I don't think that at all, actually. Okay, I understand. I, I understand your message then. But you know what you've done. You brought people in your room that you had a problem with and you had something bad to say about. And you spoken on what you had bad to say about them while they were in your presence. I don't know if you would have did that in real life. You might have. You might not have. I don't Jay, know. when you say my room, you mean on Clubhouse? No, I don't give a fuck about no Clubhouse. Clubhouse ain't got shit to do with nothing. We talking about real life. We talking about your podcast and all this other shit. We ain't talking about no Clubhouse. Clubhouse ain't shit. I just got right on here. This club. I just got on here four days ago. Like, this shit don't mean nothing to me. Now, it, I understand it's becoming a big platform. But this shit don't mean nothing to me. What I'm asking you is, the same energy that you transpire, the people that come on your podcast and different channels that you have leverage on, that you are, yeah, that on jay i don't interview people on on my podcast yeah you don't interview them but you got a bunch to say about them you well, yeah, tell, some, that's, that's, that's tell somebody when you'll tell somebody when you don't like them you'll tell make i don't watch enough of them joe i don't watch enough of them i just seen you disrespect a bunch of guys rightfully so or unrightfully so you did? I don't know if y'all had personal issues before they got on your shit. I have no idea. I just know what's transpired. I know what you did when they got there. There's a, I know what you did when they got there. So I don't know if it was for personal meanings, means or podcast means, podcast means, whatever. You do what I'm saying? I don't know which one it was for. I just know it transpired. And you had to let it be known that it was this and it was that. When ain't nobody bring you that energy. Ain't nobody bring that energy to you initially. But you had to let it be known at that time that you brought the energy to them. 
What what time frame is this? You said what time frame? Yeah, because it sounds like you're speaking about something specific, and I don't know. No, nah, I'm just I'm speaking on a bunch of different situations, and it's a bunch of people in here that can tell you that anybody know what I'm talking about. You just talk a lot of shit. I know a million of them. Like you say, we watch this shit all the time. Like old girl said, Migos. Migos, the Yachty interview was pretty bad. You kind of, with the whole, um, what's it called? The 360 deal shit that you put on them. Yeah. Nah, Joe, I got a question for you. Ones, it's a bunch of them. Y'all feel like that ones. was bad? It wasn't bad, but you definitely challenged him in a way where you could tell he wasn't ready for it. And yeah, Yachty's a little younger, and this, but it's just it. like your maturity that he wasn't ready for. He wasn't ready for the questions that you asked. He wasn't ready for the Joe, questions you that be, you applied. You be, you be pressing niggas that ain't ready to be pressed. And you guys you, are in the you same You let it be experience. known that you got situations with guys. They ain't even know they had a situation with you, but you just stand on it. Nah, I don't think that's like, my energy. Yachty. I'm, I'm, te I'm telling you what's transpired. You might not think that's what you displaying, but we telling you what you displaying. Well, I wouldn't say it, it's displayed like that, but it's definitely like from that's a cool. more that's like your, a that's your perspective. Let everybody else speak too, because there's a bunch of other people that can say some other shit. Hey, I Junior, I, Junior, what, Junior, what I, get, Junior, I ain't going to lie. He, 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 didn't be, he ain't did nothing. Like, on his podcast, I listened to him. He ain't did nothing but show show respect to, to, to all the vibes. So, I don't know. I, I understand your perspective. I've been told you to exit the building. Damn. That is my perspective, too, though. And I think if we speak to Lil Yachty or any of the people that Y'all think that type of interview went that way? Like today, Yachty would say he appreciates that. He appreciated that back then. Yeah, I think about all the people that you told, I don't like you. I don't I'll like y'all. Good publicity. I ain't fucking with your music. Like, you know, you, you understand how many times you done said this shit on multiple occasions. So why not send that? I don't, yeah, but I don't, but I don't think that's, I don't think that's personal. I mean, so if you, you, if, you invite, if you if you invite somebody to your platform and then disrespect them, it's it's personal. So Complex with his platform. What the fuck? So I mean, that, picking, because you know who coming, and you know you don't like them already. So regardless of if somebody else line that platform up, you know what's transpiring with that platform. Yo, the only the, the, I'm only talking about this Yachty interview because that's the one that stands out. In this type of conversation, I mean, it's, it's it's all good. Don't worry about it. I ain't worried about it. And that was my very yeah, first yeah. interview, by the way. Hey, Joe. Publicity sales, man. We know that. But guess what, Mom? You What's know that, I'm a mom? nigga. You know I'm a nigga. They ain't looking for no publicity because I don't exactly. get paid for them. Exactly. So this we shit don't mean nothing to me. Response. You know it don't mean nothing to me. I just want somebody to tell me how they feel and, and be real about it and stand on it. I don't care about none of that publicity shit. This shit don't mean nothing to me. That's for everybody else. It's for the birds. So we let them stand on that or not stand on it. Joe, it's I, all good. I know why yeah. I used to pick on them kids at school about their shoes because everybody else did. They thought it was funny. Joe, that ain't why you pick at uh, these artists sometimes. No, nah, man, I, and I don't. I don't look at it as picking on artists. I don't. I look at it as. as I look at it. I look at it as as us outside of critique and just giving information and funneling information that wasn't readily available to me when I came in. There's a lot of ways to do that. Yeah, I, I understand that perspective, Joe. Like I understand that. It's oh, not. It's, it's never to disrespect niggas. It's certain shit I won't even touch on on my platform like i run my shit very differently than how hip-hop media is ran like it's not to play with niggas it's not and i don't have people on my platform my podcast 
that I wouldn't that I wouldn't fuck with in real life or have a conversation with in real life. It's, I'm Man, not. You I'm not. Dis, in, you didn't. You didn't disrespect the bunch of niggas on your platform though. I don't watch it. But I'm saying what? that I don't think talking about a nigga's music negatively is disrespecting them personally. I mean, you ain't had to bring me to your platform to do that. So it is negatively when you try to put me on the forefront to do so. You could have called my phone and gave me constructive criticism rather than put me on the internet for everybody to see this. It's a difference. And you are older, nigga, so you should know that. You should know that you should call, you could call the little homies and let them know, hey, man, this ain't what's transpiring, rather than trying to put them on a platform where everybody can hear it for you to give your message. You could have gave them a message in a hundred di different other ways. I guess I'm talking to myself now, right? Nah, yo, yo, that kind of makes sense what you're saying, though. No, um, nigga, it do make sense. How you gonna say it kind of do? Kind of makes sense, but at the same token, he, he, but hey, look, hey, but man. Junior, hey, he media, hey, hey. he media, he media, though. So he got to talk about things that drop. You feel me? That's cool. He media. Be but he media know where he right come way. from, so he got to be held accountable. Be media the right way. Why the fuck you feel like you need to speak on everything that I say for him? <laughs> Not really. I'm just having a conversation. That's cool. Person. We can have a conversation. Just chill, though. You ain't got to respond to everything I say, though, because that's what you've been doing. Let him speak for himself. I'll be quiet too. <laughs> yeah, no, I just never, I never looked at it that way, to be honest with you. What other way is it to look at it though, Joe? Uh, <laughs> like I just said, running the pod, <laughs> running the podcast and critiquing music without it all. Uh, without it being a personal shot at nobody that you're critiquing. But you got to understand that nigga, everybody got emotions and everybody got feelings, right? Because everybody man. So if you want to criticize me in public, why you can't criticize me in private? Nah. Nah, I, criti I criticize. I criticize my friends and the people I love and care about in private and in public like that's a courtesy Are you I, ain't, I ain't never heard you criticize your wife in per public that's somebody you care about you criticize her in public and that's no disrespect i'm not married are you talking about my son's mom I'm talking about your girlfriend and anybody else. I never heard you criticize them in public other than on TV where you got recognition for that too. I have a long time ago when I was a little immature. I tend not to move that way at 40. Exactly. So I'm saying, why are you moving like that with youngsters? Because we older. Why are you moving like that with youngsters? My, my stance is I don't. Your stand, my stance is that you do. You won't, you won't, you won't criticize somebody that you can give constructive criticism behind closed doors where it might actually be a, a positive influence in their life. You rather give it to them in public and it be a negative influence in their life, and then you got to deal with what you got to deal with, and they got to deal with what they got to deal with. Now it's a problem. Now you created an animosity that it didn't need to be created because you could have seen the, said the same thing that you said in public behind closed doors and it would have gave them more meaning. So therefore, if you want to give your, your audience meaning, if you want to really be beneficial to your audience, if you really want to give your audience direction, 
do you understand that if you give them that in a different platform and then have a different conversation with them on another platform that you'll get way further than what it is that you're getting based upon trying to belittle somebody publicly. But Jay, I, I speak to mad of these young niggas are uh, off platform personally. Um, advice, kick it with them. Like that happens. I mean, that's that's the guys that we don't know about though. We talking about the ones that we do. So you might talk to a bunch of niggas the same way I say I could say I talk to a bunch of niggas, but don't nobody know the niggas I'm talking to. When we have an opportunity to talk to influencers, though, the guys that I ha actually have a chance of coming up, the guys that I am in position or have been in position to come up, let's give them constructive criticism rather than belittling them and making them something less than they are. Let's give them the criticism they need behind closed doors. And then when we had this, these interviews, let's give them the, in, the criticism that they need. I agree with that. You do, you do shit to be funny. You do shit to get fused. Jay, I'm the last, listen I'm to me. The last listen to me. Media person that does Man, that's cool, views. but you do shit. You do shit for views, and I don't respect that. Jay, I can assure you. You do, you you do, do shit to get. Views. You do shit to get views. You speak on certain contexts, and you speak on certain situations, so people can laugh at certain people, and certain people can feel discredited about whatever it is that they're doing based upon what you said. Well, you could have had that same conversation with this youngster behind closed doors and uplifted him and then came back and got the same notoriety that you wanted from down plan them, that you could have got right here on your show. Jay, I don't do shit for views and I don't downplay niggas to Man, get up. Hey, hey, Joe, I don't, I don't want to disrespect you and I don't want you to disrespect me. Because you ain't never disrespect none, of, you ain't never took it there with none of them young niggas. So I don't expect you to take it there with me. You did, but this is the thing, nigga. You done a lot to discredit people and uh, say what you had to say about certain artists and shit like that. I think he's just a very honest person. <laughs> he's just a blunt person. Nigga, this shit don't matter. We all blatant, blunt. And honest. That's what we are. That's what we stand on. We all that. Tell him to tell you that he don't think I'm that. We both that. It's a time and a place for everything. I never take my blatancy and my honesty to try to uplift myself based upon another nigga's transgression. He capitalized on people bullshit. He'll say that he feel like this, this, and that about a nigga. Well, he ain't got to say that. He could have went, went and whispered in his young nigga ear because he an older nigga. You know what I'm saying? He has respect in the game. The same thing that he said. Well, nah, not even the same thing. He could have whispered something else in this young guy ear on this podcast or anything else. And it would have had a lot more understanding. And him creating beef by saying some bullshit and what he said in this podcast. He could have put that nigga to the side and gave him some game. The same way we do. He could have put him to the side, whispered in his ear and be like, hey, nigga, you can do this. Instead of going on here, man, I don't like your music. Duh, 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 duh. Now tell a nigga how he can progress. Tell somebody how they can be better. Tell them if they do this, you feel like they can make more money for their family. You come in this motherfucker and telling somebody ain't creating no drama. He just ain't created drama with the right people. This is all. I got a question for Joe. Why did you retire rapping? Didn't love it anymore. That's all. There's nothing more to it. 
Joe, you gotta yeah. get out of here with all these dry answers. Come on, give us something. But but he giving people advice on how to rap. Well, Joe is a lyricist though. Hey Joe, can you freestyle? In his in his own manner. And there ain't no discredit to the accomplishments that he made, because I know he a goat in his own manner. He a goat in his own manner. But don't discredit the other goats. Just because you don't believe in them. Just because you ain't feeling them. Pull them to the side and give them some advice if you feel like it's you need to give them some advice. Jay, I agree with everything you're saying. <laughs> I agree. But why did you do differently? Answer that. You agree with me, but why did you do differently? Well, Jay, when I tell you that I have relationships with these kids and speak to them off platform, you say nobody knows about it. When I say I mean, to you, it's when cool. I say to I you, know that you I know I'm you trying have to give them some information. Hey, Joe, that, I ain't gonna I ain't gonna discredit you because I know you speaking truth when you say that, but it ain't all of them. So the ones that you ain't got relationships with and that you talking to like that. And the ones who get the rebuttaling back to you, y'all create other situations that don't need to transpire between grown-ups and kids. I, I I agree with that, which is why I think I'm one of the older niggas that's on the right side of the generation gap building. Like, I'm not hating on none of these young niggas. But you have. I think that Yachty interview and that Migos situation is the only one we could really point to on this. It don't matter. You have. Oh, I have, and, and I rectified it. How you rectify hating? <laughs> By apologizing. By saying you were wrong. Yeah. That's what he just so, said. So you were wrong. Yeah, I've had that conversation with Yachty and Quavo. Nah, I'm just having and... that conversation with you now. Now you got to have it with me. I had that talk with them. Yeah. A man can say when he's wrong. Of course. We all got to stand on what we stand on. If we say something, we got to stand for it. 100%. And I don't think that's happened again since then. I ain't gonna I ain't gonna speak on something that I ain't certain about. I'm loving this open dialogue though. I have another no, this, question this, for you. This kind of real dialogue. Joe, are you um are you still cool with Slaughterhouse? Mm-hmm. It's my brothers. Okay, that was all. <laughs> Thought you go more deeper into it. I have a question. So, what do you feel, Joe? That um, you have any, given the platform you have, do you feel like you have any influence on the things that you say and how people um, look at? You know, I don't know how to word it right the now. The way the way that he construes his message. Yes, I have a, please, I have exactly. a response. Yeah. I, I have a responsibility on on that platform to just do what I feel is right and say what I feel is right. So, yeah, there is some influence that comes with it, but nah, it's my responsibility to make sure fuck shit is not just said for the sake of saying it. That's where I disagreed with what Jay was saying. A lot of these niggas do things for views and it's, it's like blatant. Nigga, obvious. this is what you did. You did it. No, I was really, I was really angry in that moment. This cool, I this cool. But why are you angry at kids? How can you be angry at somebody who made a mistake that you made too? No, I was, I was, I wasn't angry. At I'm kids. saying you just said you was angry at kids. That's what you just said. No, I said I was angry in the moment, but I wasn't okay, angry. Okay, so kids. you angry? I'm not angry at kids. You angry? That's my, that's my perspective. You angry? 
So you being angry, what? It allows you to be irrational? When, when you don't want to be somewhere, you kind of remove yourself. That's that's what I did. You could have removed yourself from everything instead of saying anything at all. You chose to say something. You chose to go out your way and say something when you could just remove yourself from kid business because they ain't got nothing to do with your era or your time. So why speak on something that has nothing to do with you? That was the question. Why speak on something that has nothing to do with you or your era? Because that's what's happening at the time, right? Yeah. And I understand that respectfully. You speaking on something that can make you relevant at the time. No. Yeah, this is it's the only thing. Why else, why else speak on somebody else's business? I don't speak on nobody's business if it ain't got nothing to do with mine. Same thing. But you chose you, you chose to go out your way and speak on somebody else's business. Jazz, I talk about now nah, this this and, junior. This junior. Uh, junior, I talk about hip hop and music and culture for no other reason than I love it. I mean, I understand it. We all love it. We all come up under it. It's, it's not I've been, I've been this game. I've been, I've been this game as long as you've been in it because I was a child when I got in it. When you was in it, except I've been in it longer than you because we still relevant now. So it ain't no disrespect to you. It ain't no taking no nothing away from you. It's just goddamn. We don't have to implement ourselves in bullshit when bullshit doesn't transpire to us. That's a fact. If it ain't a part of us, we ain't got to implement ourselves in it. When we put ourselves in bullshit and we ain't a part of the bullshit, it's like we're looking for attention. I get it. But that was four years ago. Nigga, it don't matter. Okay, that's cool. I understand. I was just speaking on what I was speaking on. I understand. You're right. It's all good, my brother. So I just no that. I don't want no prizes and I don't want no smoke with this situation. Ain't nobody say nothing about us. So it's all that matter. But so I, I just have a anybody we do business with or we have business dealings with it's like speaking on us too so for future references yeah i ain't gotta say too much oh nigga joy what up bro who was that talking i'm big jack don't play with me like that and That's what I'm saying. Educate. And, and, and There's nothing you can educate this, you on. How many people in this room? 675 people saw that shit. <laughs> Nigga, it was 1,200. Because you know, had an intellectual was, conversation with Jay. That was educate sexy, you. That was really sexy. Who said that? <laughs> he, he can't educate you. No, he ain't, as, he ain't as intellectual as I am. But that's what I'm saying. You wanted to have a conversation with him like that. But the reason he was the way he was with those other interviews is because he felt like he could do that to him. He knows he can't do that to you. So it's Try like... Drop some so he can pick it up. And tell him get his bitch ass out the way then. The same way I told him. Talk though. That would have been interesting. I told him to get his bitch ass out the way. You ain't hear that? He was quiet. I never seen him quiet ever. He yeah, likes to lead quiet. the conversation too. He likes to be like the leading. It's cool. There's nothing he, he, he know when he dealing with certain entities. There's a... I ain't gonna say too much. You know when he dealing with more than he can chew. There's a, I don't want to say too much. I've been said that though. I knew that when I stood in the picture in the first place. Y'all ain't know it, but I knew it. So bitch ass, I don't play with us. There ain't no disrespect though. If you want to have a conversation, little nigga, we can have a conversation, little nigga. Just stop discrediting niggas I fuck with. Because he get to talking shit about people that I got relationships with and creating problems when problems don't need to be created. I thought you was going to create a problem with me. 
but you knew better, little nigga. So I appreciate you know, that. Damn well, you know, I, you know, I appreciate well, you that. that, bro. I appreciate that, and I thank you for that. For I not creating a problem with me. Don't want yeah. Maybe he's smart. Get your bitch ass out the way. Stop playing. I ain't joining. Yeah. Nigga, I don't care, James. What's wrong with you? That nigga disrespected too many of us. You ain't in tune with what's, what's transpired then. That nigga done tripped out. He'd have been disrespectful. From number one to down low. He lucky I ain't snapping. I, 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 you, you ain't, you ain't want to flick that nigga on his head, bro? I told him I was going to flick him on his forehead. Y'all forgot? <laughs> <laughs> I told him that. I warned him with that. I said, nigga, I'll flick you on your forehead right now. I just ain't do it. See, you, see, you done flicked him on the phone. I don't think he would have wanted to throw the camera. He would have done that to you. He would have walked away. You said what? I said, you done flicked him on the phone. He wouldn't have walked away. He ain't going to play with fire. You play with fire, you get burnt. He would have got to crying to my old man like Junior Trivin. Like everybody else would have done. And I would have been the escape route. Like, nah, Junior, you tripping. But as soon as I brought to fruition what's been said, they'll be like, okay, I understand why you're saying what you're saying, but what they got to do with you? I'll be like, man, they got to do with the culture. They're my homies too. And then it would have been respect. Okay, I understand where you're coming from. Them your partners. It would have been a whole different situation. I just don't know how this shit go. But it's all good. I don't want to smoke with nobody. My brother's grabbing on me and shit, nothing. Like I'm tripping. <laughs> and I ain't even tripping. Deshaun, is this your first game back since your injury? Hey, Dan. Yeah. I ain't even know you was still in this bitch. I'm just being quiet. <laughs> What? Hey. Everybody trying to make me the bad guy. Y'all kick me out the room and shit. Y'all want to make me the bad guy. I'm the one who's saving everybody. That Chef Danny, I asked you that. I'm making everybody see look like they posted it. They try to double back. What's somebody going to do? I'm making this shit look the way it's supposed to look. And I get criticized. But it's all good. I ain't worried about it. Play with me, play with my family. I'm going to show you in real life. Yeah. Oh, God. You really hopped care. into a group chat, though? And then you moved into this group chat, and then you took it over. <laughs> 